America. The United States, 50 states, each different in their own special way. State flags, state coins, state animals, I guess. And in this case, state anthems. Yeah, you've heard of national anthems, but apparently there's such a thing as state anthems or state songs. Just kind of one more way for the states to retain their identity against the growing clutches of the federal government. In a way, these are the state's official theme songs. Most were adopted sometime in the 20th century by a random committee, and they've been stuck with them ever since. Not every state has a song. Some states have way too many. This was something I wasn't really aware of until recently, despite being obsessed with niche anthems for places I'll never go to. I wouldn't be shocked if many people hadn't even heard of these songs before, even if they're from that state. It's not really something you pay attention to. Until now. So what better way to talk about these songs than to rank them in a tier list? Man, I've always wanted to do one of these things. Let's start off with Alabama's song, Alabama. Not Alabama the band, but Alabama the state that has the state song, Alabama. So how is the song? It's really not anything special. It is more full of thighs and thines than a Shakespeare play, though. They wanted to be extra fancy. Has that usual slow flow that a lot of these songs tend to have. Nothing too complex, easy for kids to sing. Yet this isn't the only version of this song. And one of those is covers by Rick Pickren. If you've never heard of Rick Pickren, yeah, that's fair. But he did covers for all of these state songs, and they're a lot better than the originals. Alabama. In my opinion, if your state song can't be salvaged by a Rick Pickering cover, then it's truly lost. Luckily for Alabama, this generic song makes for a pretty catchy country folk tune. Like, Alabama doesn't need to have a dramatic orchestra, let's be real. Sometimes just a banjo or guitar says a lot more about a state and inspires more pride than a symphony ever could. The thighs and thines sound kind of weird with banjos, though. Puts it into a B. The Last Frontier, the Great White North, the place that nobody lives, except Moose. But Dam does have a nice flag. Everyone likes Alaska's flag. So much so, their anthem is just about it. It has a melody that's honestly better than like 80% of national anthems. You could say that this was the national anthem of a country and people wouldn't bat an eye. And then it ends with... Brings a damn tear to the eye. There's only like 12 of you Alaskans up there. How can you have a great flag and song? Must be something with being stuck inside all winter. They got nothing else to do. A tier. It kind of reminds me of Jimmy Buffett. Come to this land of sunshine. To this land where life is young. But this wasn't written by Jimmy Buffett. Uh, it was written in 1919. I guess his spirit just transcends time or something. Just go outside, sit on a beach, and then, uh, fry to death. Thank God for Arizona in splendid sunshine dress. B. So, Arkansas's official state anthem was written in 1916. Honestly, trying to find an even decent recording of it was really hard to come by. Which you might think, how can that happen? These are state anthems. And yeah, the funny thing about a lot of state anthems, actually, is that they only really exist on the books. Some songs are used a lot, and some songs are just never used, ever. So, Arkansas's official anthem, at least in the few recordings I could find of it, is average at best. Arkansas, Arkansas, tis a name, dear. Is the place I call home, sweet home. 
and I'm pretty sure Arkansas knew it was, because in the 80s, they decided to make two new songs. Two songs for the 150th anniversary, which normally I wouldn't pay attention to state songs. But well... Oh, I may wonder, but when I do, I will never be far from you. Arkansas, You Run Deep In Me is such an 80s country song. It's perfect. In my opinion, this should become the state anthem. Because can you really think of a more accurate theme for Arkansas than a 40-year-old country song? Arkansas, you run deep in me. The other one is much worse, but it is funnier because it tries so hard to be sincere. It's the spirit of the rivers and the spirit of the lakes. It's the spirit that's in each and every home. I think it repeats the word spirit like 30 times. The spirit of the people and the spirit of the land. It's the spirit of tomorrow and today. Somehow both of these songs are perfect time capsules of the 80s. Your actual anthem is still a C though. You ever play New Vegas? I love you. I Love You California is a song straight from Hollywood's golden era, but it isn't just all Hollywood. Its lyrics celebrate every part of the state. It's actually kind of a shame because while this song is still officially the anthem, they just never use it for anything. Last time it was played in public was like the Reagan days, but don't quote me on that though. The reason I like this is because I'm a Fallout nerd, and if the NCR actually had an official anthem, this would certainly be it. It almost makes you wish for a nuclear winter, and to go take out the Legion at the dam once and for all. <laughs> Finally, something average. Where the Columbines Grow isn't a bad anthem, but it is perfectly forgettable. So forgettable, most Coloradans don't know it's actually the anthem. The only song anyone knows is Rocky Mountain High, Rocky Mountain. which was adopted in 2007. But uh, this one came first. I had to listen to it a few times because I just couldn't retain it. I still can't really retain it. And the wild booming waters dash It's a calm melody, doesn't really do anything too special. The lyrics are just describing the natural beauty of Colorado. Look at this flower. Even the Rick Pickering cover is a slow country ballad. Eh, C tier. It's, uh, it's Yankee Doodle. Yankee Doodle went to town riding on a pony. He stuck a feather in his cap and called it macaroni. Look, I get how Yankee Doodle can kind of be tied to Connecticut. It's tied to this whole region, really. So why does Connecticut get it? Maybe they were one of the first states to pick an anthem. Nope. They picked this song as their official anthem in 1978. But why? Well, it's because the governor at the time was just sick of hearing Yale's fight song whenever he would show up to official events. So they had a competition, and out of the original songs they could have chose, they just went with Yankee Doodle. I guess there was some bicentennial nostalgia or something. Look, Yankee Doodle is a fine enough song. It just doesn't make me think of Connecticut. And that was some of the people's complaints back then, too. Maybe if it mentioned Connecticut in some way, or was significant in its history other than just the revolution, then sure. But it's not. They just picked the song. D tier. Our Delaware. That's right, not your Delaware, or my Delaware, our Delaware. It's a catchy tune, even more than I originally gave it credit for, because throughout the whole making of this video, it just kept popping up in my head. Oh, our Delaware, our beloved Delaware. Like the opposite of Colorado's song. It apparently has three verses for each of the three counties in the entire state. A tier. 
In true Florida fashion, they have had two state songs. One from the past, and another that is modern and equally as terrible, just for different reasons. So first, the old song, that was written in 1851, and then adopted in 1935 revised in 1978, and another time in 2003, before they just ditched it all together in 2008. This song was Old Folks at Home. What a fitting name. If you ever heard any rift in the South, like during a Looney Tunes cartoon or something, then you know this song. It's a classic minstrel tune, written from the perspective of a slave. Oh boy. Fun fact, they replaced the word darkies with brothers in 1978. Because the last song came with more baggage than an exhausted father at Disney World, they decided to make a new anthem. And it's, uh, it's worse. Mockingbirds cry and gators lie out in the sun. This sounds like the end credit song of a 90s Disney animated movie. And I mean that in all the worst ways. This would be a pretty big bop in 1993, but it was made in 2008. What the hell is happening here? It's cheesy, but at the same time, it makes you laugh. And at the end of the day, isn't that what Florida is all about? The minstrel song is funnily enough the better tune, so it gets a D. The new one gets an F. I'm not gonna lie, I thought Georgia was cheating, like Colorado. There was no way that they picked the Ray Charles song and just stuck with it. Because, yeah, while it's a great song, they just can't pick it as an anthem. Well, here's the thing. Georgia doesn't actually have an anthem, but it does have a state song, and that song is this. Georgia. Georgia. So Georgia On My Mind by Ray Charles was a cover of a 1930s song by Hoagie Carmichael. That 30s song was actually written about the state. It wasn't some officially approved anthem or anything, but it was about his home. Though it can be interpreted as a girl named Georgia, which is kind of the point. A lot of state songs are almost love songs to their state. The funny thing is, Georgia On My Mind works in any style. Every rendition kind of encapsulates a different part of Georgia. It being so popular feels a little unfair to be something that regular people actually listen to. S tier. Hawaii's is sung entirely in native Hawaiian. It's a peaceful song, one that is actually about defending Kamehameha and the homeland with a spear. And here we have Idaho winning her way to fame. There it is. It's Idaho. It's a pleasant little song. I don't know how else to really describe the tune. Like, listen to that. We'll go singing, singing of you, singing of Idaho. Never mentions a potato once, though. B tier. Illinois' song is just... Illinois. Literally. I don't know how many times they just repeat Illinois in the song. And its mellow tones are these Illinois, Illinois. And its mellow tones are these Illinois. Man, this state can't catch a break. Look at that flag. Look at that song. You need some better state symbols. Other than Lincoln, I guess. It put to sleep the choir that's meant to be singing it. D tier. For some reason, Indiana's anthem is kind of depressing. The song is mainly about nostalgia and wishing to go back to how things were, remembering your childhood, your parents, your dead wife. Wait, what? Yeah, the story of the anthem is just like a guy wandering the Wabash, thinking about how everything went wrong in his life. It's all gone. I loved her, but she thought I didn't mean it. It's over. Also, there's corn. Considering this is Indiana, they really hit the nail on the head with that one. See. This one sounds familiar. Hey, 
Hey, wait a second. What is it with this area and just having terrible state symbols? It really isn't your thing, huh? Sorry, Iowa. I don't care how popular this tune was back then. Surprisingly, it will pop up later on. I don't know why it was so popular, but it was. And now it's just the Christmas tree song, F tier. Fun fact, if you look up Home on the Range on Google, this is the main thing you get. I've always associated Home on the Range with like, the general West. I don't know about Kansas specifically, but apparently, Kansas is where the song was written. The song, written by Dr. Brewster Higley, great name by the way, was written while overlooking his new plot of land in Kansas. A song about Kansas, one that kind of just became bigger than just one state. It became an embodiment of the Old West in general. Another fun fact, the original lyrics were a home, a home, where the deer and the antelope play. And then in later renditions, it was changed to Home, home on the rain. The question I'm grappling with is, does this make you think of Kansas? Has it taken on a greater life of its own? As a historical song, yeah, S tier. As a state song specifically, eh, B. I always forget about this song until watching the Kentucky Derby, penned by Stephen Foster, the father of American music, the guy who went on to write all of these. And the thing is, this song is just ingrained into Kentucky. If you hear this, you will think of nothing else but Kentucky. And maybe this. Sun shines bright on my old Kentucky home, blah 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 blah. Either way, solid A. Remember how I said Home on the Range doesn't make you think of Kansas? Well, Louisiana's definitely doesn't make you think of Louisiana. Louisiana's anthem is You Are My Sunshine, the nursery song for babies. The song isn't actually that old. It was released in 1940 by a man who'd eventually become Louisiana's governor. And no, I'm not talking about him. I'm talking about Jimmy Davis, country music hall of famer Jimmy Davis. The reason why this song is Louisiana's anthem is in honor of Jimmy. They adopted it in 1977, which is kind of funny because it's not like Jimmy died or anything. Uh, he actually lived to the age of 101 and died in 2000. The song that he wrote, though, kind of just took on a life of its own. It never mentions one thing about Louisiana, ever, but because it was one of the main songs of note written by a two-time governor, that was the one they stuck with. F. Though their cultural song is Southern Nights, so that's cool. It kind of sounds like a college fight song. Wait, is this a college fight song? Apparently not. It's kind of crazy how little information there is about this song. Uh, every rendition I see is just the same couple of guys singing. Like, the best they could do is meet up in a small house in the middle of the woods. Now that I think about it, that describes Maine pretty well, to be honest. Come on, Maine. Just like your flag, you could do so much better. D. What's with two states having the same tune? The Despotier is on my shore, Maryland, my Maryland. Why was the Christmas tree song so popular back then? It was a common thing, I guess. The song equivalent of having a seal on a blue banner. Maryland, my Maryland isn't even an anthem anymore. The story about this is actually pretty funny. So this song was written as a secessionist anthem during the Civil War. Being a border state, Maryland had a lot of pro-Confederate sympathizers who just couldn't leave, like John Wilkes Booth. And another was James Ryder Randall. The whole song is basically a call to arms to leave the Union. The tyrant is Lincoln, the last line spurns the northern scum, and what's the funniest is that Maryland didn't even adopt this song until 1939. <laughs> Ever since it existed, uh, it's been controversial, I guess. People wanted it tweaked or gone, and it was killed in 2021. As funny of a story as that is, I mean, it's still getting an F. I don't care about secession, I just want originality. So, I had this entire section finished. It was recorded and edited, and then I realized I messed up. If you look up Michigan State Anthem on YouTube, you will get all of these results with the song, Michigan, My Michigan. 
I sing a song of all the best. Michigan, my Michigan. The official state anthem of Michigan is My Michigan. Michigan, My Michigan, and My Michigan are two completely different songs. The song that you see all over YouTube is not even the actual anthem. The official anthem of Michigan was written in the 30s, adopted in the 30s, and then just never played again. Turned out the songwriters owned the copyright and just never relinquished it to the state. And the state never bought the copyright. So the song has kind of just been on the books for 90 years. It's never been played at any official events. There's no official recordings. And because of that, everyone's just kind of assumed that Michigan My Michigan is the official state anthem. But it's not. This random other song is. The best rendition of the official state anthem of Michigan that I was able to find on the internet was this guy reading the sheet music and playing the piano. It has 5,000 views. I really liked Michigan, my Michigan too. I was gonna give it an A. If we're being blunt, Michigan just really doesn't have a state anthem. But the one it technically does have, I'm giving a D. Thanks for wasting my time. This sounds like a standard national anthem somewhere in Scandinavia, which is fitting. Soft choir, almost heavenly. I don't know if that was intentional or that was some Nordic energy coming through. We'll never know. While it is calming, uh, sorry Minnesota, you got like the most forgettable anthem on the list. Also, your new flag is terrible. I, uh, I have no words. Go Mississippi, keep rolling along. This is real. This is the official song of Mississippi. It's got a fucking slide whistle. It's polka. Keep rolling along. It has a kazoo. What is this? Why why is it this goofy? Who in the committee went up and said, "You know what? We need to sound like Veggie Tales." Man, is it catchy. This is the anthem that Mississippi deserves. It's the anthem we all deserve. Congratulations, Mississippi. You may perform the lowest in, like, everything, but you're the highest on this list. And the highest in my heart. M-I-S-S-I-S-S-I-P-P-I -S 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 So yeah, there you go. Part one of this tier list. Uh, I didn't want to split this video in half, but it turns out talking about 50 state anthems took a lot longer than I expected. And honestly, I didn't know how many people would sit through the whole thing. So uh, take this as a breather, I guess. Don't worry, we still got a lot more jolly tunes to get to. Man, so many state songs. So many states. We need less states. Hey, Jimmy. What are you up to? Oh, just wishing for Rhode Island's demise. Fair enough. It's just so confusing. Because I live in Rhode Island. Jimmy, don't give your location away like that. Oh, no. What do I do? Nothing. You're doomed. You should have used NordVPN, the sponsor of today's video. NordVPN is a virtual private network, keeping your IP safe from bamboozlers and near-do-wells. With threat protection, you're always protected from the dangers online. You can stay safe with CyberSec, security that keeps your data safe behind a wall of next-generation encryption. NordVPN has thousands of servers worldwide. The barriers of the internet no longer matter. Right now, get an exclusive deal and four additional months when you use my link nordvpn.com slash altist. It's risk-free with Nord's 30-day money-back guarantee. That's nordvpn.com slash altist.